bring in my artwork, scale it down a little bit. I'll go ahead and put the label in here. And I will, I'll rearrange this a little bit to make it a little more consistent. Okay, so we've jumped ahead to save a little time in the video where we've essentially built the banana and the peach layouts for the screen so that they're similar or as, as close to, the, to matching the apple one as possible. So I have laid all of the elements out and really what's mostly left at this point is just adding the interactive scripts. And for my first frame of my movie, this first region of sprites have the most elements involved. So I have to decide what I want them to do. What I want is for all of these to change their size when they're rolled over to suggest that they're interactive. So I am going to use a script down below in my cast called Pulse Sprite and I will just drag that over the top of those selected elements. Remember I can add this to more than one thing at a time. It's a big time saver instead of having to drop them on there one at a time since I know th I, that I want them to all do the same thing I will use that script with the default settings. This will essentially change it by 10 pixels in its width and height and then go back to its normal size cyclically so it'll be more interesting to look at. When I have these selected I'm also going to apply a script down here, this behavior called change cursor. I'll drop the behavior onto any one of these. They will all get that which allows for the cursor to visually change when the pointer moves inside the area of that sprite. It will change to the little hand with a finger or back to the default pointer when I move away. So that gives more visual, visual feedback to describe and suggest what's going to happen when somebody moves their pointer over when somebody clicks an element. So the change cursor behavior will make the cursor change when I roll over different sprites. Just adds a little more visual feedback. Alright, so now I have a couple of things that might be unique in terms of the navigation. I've decided that when I when somebody clicks on this arrow it will go to the end of the movie and if they click here it will just go through from one to the other. So from one fruit to the other or to the very last fruit that will go, the playhead will move to the end if I click on this one. So I do want to add my change cursor to the arrows as well. So one thing that I need to do very soon is make sure that I put a script on my frames where I want the playhead to stop. If I just run this right now, it goes all the way through and just loops through the whole movie, which does not make it interactive. What I need to do is stop the playhead so that somebody has a chance to make a decision about what they want to click. And they can wait as long as they want. The movie will not advance unless they click something. So I have a script that I use in virtually all of my movies called I always call it hold frame. You can call it anything you want. But what it does is it holds the current frame this script is attached to as long as it takes. <laughs> Basically forever until another script tells the playhead to go somewhere else. So it's just a very handy way to stop the playhead and easily see which frames you have it attached to. So I'm going to attach it to the very end of all of these sprite groups that I have. So I'm putting it at the very end of each of these. And when I run my movie and hit play, the playhead stops. And that's exactly what I want to have happen. For each of these items, it will not just cycle through automatically. It will wait. And you have to stop the playhead in order to make something interactive. So that's a really important step that you need to include in putting your interactive movie together. The next thing I would like to do is actually have the navigation do something. So I will go ahead and wire up the arrows. 
And to do that, I will use a go to marker script uh, behavior. When I say script, technically, I really mean behavior because these icons in the cast that have the little gear that's yellow are behaviors that are designed to be dropped onto frames or sprites. And I wrote them very, very simply without a lot of uh, frills or extras, but they do their job pretty well if you apply them appropriately. So I will go ahead and just drop this behavior onto the arrow and you have a choice. It's seeing all of the names of the various frames that I've marked with a name as well as allowing me to go to a loop which will just cycle from the previous marker to this point in time over and over again to the next marker the previous marker or the ones by name I'll go ahead and use the one by name I'll say this one goes to Apple I'll say OK I'll drag this one to my last arrow let me make sure I don't have this one selected I just want this one selected I'll drop the behavior on there and I'll say I want this to go to the very end of the movie which turns out to be the peach marker because I want it to go in reverse then I drop the script onto each of these elements and I have to do these one at a time because each of these elements now have to do something unique so I want this one to go to the apple I want this one to go to the peach so I drop the behavior there choose my peach marker this one to go to the banana now here you can really see how quickly we're able to wire this up now of course the scripts in the behaviors are making this possible but by having this organized ahead of time having the markers already here we're ready for the behaviors so I can actually run this and and see that I get that pulsating effect that came from one behavior when I click it it'll actually take me to the piece of fruit that I told it to go to and we're starting to see that this is becoming something more realistic as a finished product. So we're beginning to see this is turning into something closer to our desired results. So I will go to the Apple and I'm going to use another behavior that I just call Fade Pulse and this will just make the sprite change its opacity over time at this rate. And I'll do the same for the banana. So I'll drop this fade pulse on top of the banana. And I will do the same thing with the peach. So when they're rolled over, they will have that effect that's a little different from the, the size one that pulses the size. Again, some of these things are added for fun because the intended audience is children. But also, it visually tells you that something is going on here because you moved your pointer over it. So you don't need a lot of help on the screen to explain it. It's just intuitive because of the way you make it behave. This arrow, I'm going to say I want to go to the previous marker. I can say previous or I can just say main. doesn't really matter in this case. I'll just say previous just to use it. And this one, I'll actually say go to the next marker because relative to where I am, that's fine because I put these in order. And then for the banana, I'll do the same thing. I'll click on the arrow. I'll tell the marker to go to the previous marker. I'll tell this marker to go to the next marker. And then when I go to here, I want this one to go to the previous position and I want this one to go back to the main screen because I want it to wrap around so I say main this is where it's very helpful to know how the, inter the interconnected elements are actually interconnected so you you should know where all of these things will take you and have thought that out before you get into your project so I now have uh, my navigation arrows working I'd like my elements on each individual screen for the three different fruits to also take me back to the main screen so I'll go I will go ahead and use this go to marker and I'll say go main here and I'll go back to this and use this behavior and have it go to the main and then I will have the Apple do the same thing 
So if I run my movie now, I can see the elements on the screen that are dynamic. It's obvious this must do something. Why else is it pulsating? So I click and there's the apple. When I roll over it, I can have it uh, just cycle. And I could even have that work in a different way. So as it stands, it's doing that when I'm not rolled over it. But I could have it set up so that it would just work if I did roll over it. We'll say this is what we want. I don't think this is exactly the way it is in the finished movie. But when I click on these icons, it does actually allow me to go from one element to the other, from beginning to end. And actually, my script was working right. What's going on here is that even though you're not, it doesn't look like you're over the apple, because we're in the bounding area of that sprite, this white space is included in the rollover. So I would have to crop this more tightly or do some other work if it was really a concern. Um, in this case, we won't worry about it. So the only other thing that we would add to this to make it match something closer to the finished movie that we looked at earlier is to have this speak a word or a phrase when it's clicked or rolled over. So down below, I have two different behaviors that take care of that. I have the roll over version, which speaks a word or a phrase when you roll over something. And then I have another behavior that speaks a word or phrase when I mouse up on something. So let's say I just want this one to work when I roll over it. I would just drag this to the top of the apple and I can just type the word apple. Now, even though you only see a little area in here, you can type as much text as you want. And that's what will be spoken when you roll over the item. I would do that with the peach as well. I can drag this over and I could say peach. It doesn't matter if it's uh, capitalized or not. It reads it just the same. And then up here, let's say if I, if I wanted somebody to click this and not just have it accidentally play the sound when they rolled over it, I can use the other one, this other behavior that says MU, which means for mouse up. You just drag this up here and I could have this say pick a fruit. Now when I run this, you'll be able to hear these things spoken aloud when you roll over them. Apple. Peach. Pick a fruit. Yeah, that one's not working as well as it might, partly because of the opacity of the, Peach. the background color. So you have to tweak some of these things sometimes, but essentially that's how both of these speak behaviors would work. So I hope that you can see one way that you can put a movie together to make it interactive. This has a lot of the elements that you'll use in almost any kind of interactive movie that you build with Director. It has visual feedback. It has a cursor change. It has multiple media elements. So it has visual information, text information, and spoken information. And hopefully you can take these ideas and the behaviors that are included in here and wire them up for your own purposes to make much more exciting interactive movies of your own.